everyone, and welcome to Name Hero. I'm Ryan, the founder and CEO. Yesterday, we announced for a limited time, we're going to be providing a complimentary WHMCS license for our Plus, Turbo, and Business Cloud Shell products. So if you haven't caught up yet, it might be beneficial to either go back on our YouTube channel and watch the previous video, or go check out this blog post here. Cloud Shield's a new product that we've recently launched, and it's geared towards managed service providers as well as resellers to give you the ability to offer your customers a web hosting solution that's fully white labeled to your business. Business. The best part, you're able to charge your customers as you see fit and begin earning recurring revenue from them. So I want to get into this video and talk a little bit more about how you set this solution up. In yesterday's video, I talked about how you can take that free WHMCS license and actually install the billing and software autom automation solution. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you add a server to WHMCS so you can begin reselling and setting up those web hosting accounts automatically. All right. So first things first, we need to dive into our Name Hero client area. And if you're following along, you know, you might want to pause this video till you get logged in. Um, but once you get there, you're going to go to My Services. And we're going to click on our VPS. And this is the information we need. So this is our Cloud Shield VPS that we spun up yesterday and we installed WHMCS on it. Now this video assumes you already have that step completed, that you've already installed, you've got your Cloud Shield product, you've installed and set up WHMCS, and now we're gonna configure that server. So once we're here, we're gonna open in another browser tab, our WHMCS backend. So if you remember yesterday during our install, we set up an admin folder to where all your team members or just yourself can go configure the backend to your billing system. So it's important when you set this up to make sure that the URL or the folder it exists in is something unique to your business. So in my case, it's a Greenhost24. So someone go to greenhost.com slash greenhost24, and there we go, I can get to my WHMCS admin area. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. All right, now, once I'm inside of WHMCS, you know, obviously it's a brand new install, so no, not seeing any activity. Um, we wanna go ahead and set up the server. So to do so, we're gonna hover up here and we're gonna go to system settings. We're gonna search for servers, there it is, and click on it. All right, so the way WHMCS works is it automatically provisions and sets up web hosting packages for your customers. In order to do that, it's gotta have a server or space to where it can provision those hosting accounts. And so now that we have WHMCS, WHMCS installed on our Cloud Shield, we also want to use the same server to provide our customers web space. So what we're going to do is first create a group because a server group acts as whatever group, whatever servers in that group is the one that gets filled. So I'll explain more in just a second. So when I'm on this page here, I want to go to create a new group. All right, we have to give this group a name. Now this is an arbitrary name. Um, this is used for your uh, front end facing website. So when it groups products and services, it's gonna provision based on those, based on this group you set. So for example, at Name Hero, we offer website hosting, we offer WordPress hosting, WooCommerce, enterprise hosting, as well as reseller hosting. And so all of these are grouped differently because someone that buys a reseller hosting package from Name Hero, they wouldn't be put on the same server that we offer our web hosting service on. Someone that buys a WordPress hosting package, it's a separate group. So that's how you need to think about your grouping. And the good news is if you don't have all, all that determined right now, you're just starting out your business, well, that's fine. You can change that group name later and you can also change the servers in the group, but it is important. You have to do create a group to get started. So we're gonna go back in here and we're just gonna pretend for example purposes that I'm wanting to offer web hosting packages on my business website. So I'm gonna create my group and I'm gonna call it web hosting. All right. Now, fill type, um, when you have multiple servers, then this will start to populate. And so why this helps is as your business grows and you get more customers, you're not gonna be just filling your cloud VPS with this at Name Hero. You either have more cloud VPSs or maybe you buy some reseller hosting packages from us. Uh, and that way you're able to connect multiple servers to that same group. And that's how WHMCS is so powerful because it lets your business scale and grow. You don't have to, you're not just confined to one server and that's very powerful. 
So we wanna add it to the lease full. This is default and we can just leave this as is. What this means though, as customers go to sign up and you get more servers, it's gonna make sure that the one that's least utilized gets the next customer. And that way your servers don't get overloaded because it's gonna fill automatically the one that's less used. You could do fill active server until it's full, but in my, in my experience, 10 years doing this, that's not the best approach when you're trying to make sure your infrastructure is managed and uh, balanced accordingly. All right, so all we have to do is give it a name and click Save Changes. Okay, now our group is created. So now we wanna actually add a server to that group. So now we can click on this Add, Serv add New Server button. And from here, we're gonna set up our server. Now, this is a cPanel server, and that's by default, which means that our VPS uses cPanel as the control panel, and that's what your customers are gonna be able to use to access the area they build their website. Um, so you wanna make sure to select the correct one. Now, cPanel is gonna be your default for Cloud Shield because it comes with a free cPanel license, and it is arguably, I, I do believe still yet, it's the best control panel for your users. All right, so now we need some information about our cPanel server. We need our host name or IP address. We need a username, password, and API token. So first thing, we go to this page here. This has our host name, our IP address, as well as our name servers, and those will be important later on in this video. So first thing, we can grab this host name, and this is all set up for you, so you don't have to worry about configuring anything. Just put this in here. Now our username, this is gonna be root for this specific server, because it, this server is gonna connect as a root user. Now, I don't recommend using a root password because that's something that's gonna change over time. I, I hope you change it. I hope you change it every 90 days at minimum, if not 30 days, for system security. And so the problem that happens, if you set the root password here, and then you change it down the line, you might forget, well, wait a second, I set up my WHMCS with the root password, and I need to save, resave it there. And if you forget, your customers can't access their own cPanels um, through your website. So you wanna make sure to use an API token. It's much safer and a much smarter approach. So what we wanna do is log on to Web Host Manager, and we can use this little button right here. And that's gonna log us right in to where we'll get the rest of this information. All right, using the search box here on the left, we wanna type in API, and you'll see Manage API Tokens comes up. And this is where we're gonna create that new token. All right, now you'll notice that one's in here already, and so this is when you click that button, this automatically generates. That's the way you can single sign on from our client interface. So we're not concerned about that one, we wanna generate a new one. All right, first thing, you need to give it a name. I recommend just calling it WHMCS, that way you know this is coming to your WHMCS install. Next, I don't recommend setting expiration because obviously, you know, as long as you're in business, that server needs to be connected, so it's not gonna expire. Whitelist IPs, this is important. You wanna lock this token down to only the IP address of your actual server that WHMCS is installed on. Because if someone would to get that API token, it has full access to the system. So please don't skip this step or leave this blank. But this is the IP address where Web Host Manager or WHMCS is installed. So mine is installed on my Cloud Shield VPS, so I can grab it right here. But if there's ever any doubt, you can go back into your um, WHM here, and I'm gonna do this in a different tab, so I don't lose, lose our spot. And I can go to list accounts, and you can see my WHMCS is installed here, and here's that IP address again. All right, so now I can take it back over here. And whitelist IPs, I'm gonna paste it. Make sure there's no white space in there. All right, now we can go on down to the privileges. For this token, since it's gonna be doing a number of things, I suggest it's doing everything. Because again, it is access to the whole system, but it's gonna be locked down to your WHMCS install and to your server. Click Save. All right, now you've generated it, and this is the only time it's gonna show it. After this, the only way to get another one is to generate a new one and revoke it. So make sure you copy this down and don't go storing this insecurely, because remember, it has full access to your system. I suggest putting this in your password manager. Many out there on the market, uh, just Google Pat Best Password Manager um, and you'll find a good one, I'm sure. We'll go on here. And now we're gonna take this over to WHMCS and we're just gonna paste this here. All right, so now we're gonna leave that password field blank and we click Test Connection. 
All right, so it was successful. So now we can see that some of the details are filled in for us automatically. Next steps. So this is the name, and this is the name of the server so your customers know where their website's hosted. Um, you can change this if you want, but you wanna make sure it's named accordingly so you can identify it. If there's any doubt in that, just leave it default, and that way it stays safe. The host name, it needs to stay the same. So unless you know what you're doing and you've properly changed your host name, please do not change this because that could affect the functionality. Of course, IP address, we don't wanna change that either. If you have additional IP addresses on your um, VPS, you can add these in here. I do not, so most of the time one is sufficient. Monthly cost, I'm gonna enter the cost that I'm paying for my VPS. And so I think this is about $67 um, currently. So I'm gonna type in 67. 67. And we're gonna call this Name Hero. So monthly cost is important because as you get customers, WHMCS has reports and it's gonna show you what your revenue and what your profit is per server. So it'll show you you took in this much money and you had $67 a month of expense in that and then what's your profit on it. So as you get more servers and more packages set up, you want this so you have accurate reporting so you know how much money you're making. So of course that's important. Um, the data center, this helps you internally identify where this VPS is. So if you see VPS at 573888, you know this is a name hero. And you could even put name hero VPS or something more descriptive. It's not shown to customers. Maximum number of accounts. So on my specific VPS, I have the five account limit. Now this can be scalable, meaning that once I hit five, I can order the next tier and go to 10. So leaving 200 as default is probably your best bet because likely you're going to order another server before you hit 200 customers. Now it's up to you to change this or not, but I like to just leave it default personally. And you know, I kind of keep check on this number daily myself and that way I know what's getting full and if I need to add another one. Server status address. This, you can set up a status page um, on your website to where this server's monitored so your server status page will actually update. I'm not gonna do that in this video because it's a little bit more intricate than just um, grabbing it and going. So I will have another page or another video and tutorial set up on setting up a status page properly. But for now, we just need to get the server set up so we can start setting our packages up. Primary and secondary name server. These are automatically passed in based on that information I entered. And so this is how your customers are gonna connect their domain name to your web hosting service. So their domain might be somewhere else. It might be at another provider, but in order for them to connect to your hosting, they'll need your name servers. And so this is important not to change these unless you've specifically changed these in your VPS setup. That's something for advanced users. I recommend keeping you know, what's it, whatever's already currently set because that way you know things are configured properly and it's gonna work great for your customers. You don't need to put an IP address inside of here in case you ever do ch change the IPs along the road. You don't have to worry about editing this because this is not updated again automatically. The module is cPanel. It is, it is successfully connected as we verified. We don't have to make any changes here. Finally, the only other thing we have to look at is access control. As you get um, employees or if you have employees to your business, um, they're gonna be able to single sign on to this server through WHMCS. So if you have employees, for example, that are answering tickets, well, chances are they need to be able to access your server, but they might not have access to your name hero client area, so they can't do this. This allows them to automatically sign on to the server securely through WHMCS. So if I leave it unrestricted, everyone that's an admin in WHMCS with appropriate permissions can sign on. If I restrict it, then you can actually restrict specific roles, meaning that if you have a, a role that's, say, just server administrators or just support techs, you can restrict that. But that's outside the scope of this video because we have to actually set up those roles, roles and whatnot. For most people, unrestricted is fine, and you, know, you might grow to a level where you need to restrict that, but again, we can cover that later on. All right, so once all those changes are done or information's in, I wanna save changes, and now it's been completed. So you'll see, if everything's successful, your server should populate in here with the version of cPanel it's using. You'll see the load average, because you can easily identify, hey, is this server overloaded? Um, you can see how many licenses do I have? So you can see mine, I've got five. Um, so if, you know, once I, I've got one on there already, because it's my WHMCS install. 
So now I can fill four cPanel accounts before I need to upgrade it. And it's, we make that easy at Name Hero. If you need to upgrade your license tier, of course, you know we're more than happy to help you get that done um, immediately. So you can scale on up. You know, if you're having a big sale and getting customers, we can get that done for you. Um, SiteJet Builder, this is an add-on that's in WHMCS and cPanel. Again, we'll talk about that later, but it is available. And this information was just now updated. Um, you can click this refresh button and this will refresh all this data. So if you're looking at this page, you know you can update what's currently going on. You also have this new single sign-on button. So now if I click this, I will single sign-on into WHM, just like I did to the Name Hero panel. And that goes back to that access control feature we were talking about. Sync accounts. So this is more for migrations. You know, if I wanted to pull in the accounts from Web Host Manager, if I already had accounts on this server, and I wanted to pull these into WHMCS, but you most likely do not want to do that unless you specifically know what you're doing. Um, but I, I suggest don't, don't touch that unless you know specifically what you're trying to do there. But now our WHMCS, it's not only installed and online, but now it's got a server connected to it, and we're ready to start setting up our packages. So in my next video, we're gonna talk about how to set up your packages so you can set up hosting accounts, and I'll also show you how to set these live on your website so people can begin making orders. So we'll go over how to set them up in your WHMCS, how to get them on your website so your customers can actually buy them, and then the last part, how to set them up on your VPS so they set up the appropriate permissions. You know, you don't want to have just one package fits all. You'll likely want to have multiple packages offering differences in number of accounts, differences in number of um, storage, differences in number of bandwidth, difference in number of specific limits. So we'll go through all that in the next video in detail. If you like this video, if it helped you out, thanks a bunch for watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up though. A thumbs up on a video indicates, hey Ryan, I enjoyed this content. Please give me more of it and we'll film more around it. Also, you want to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because this is the first place all this training hits and you'll be the first in the know that way. Continue to visit our blog at namehero.com slash blog as I'll be on there with many tutorials as well, as well as a text version of this tutorial to help you out. Thanks so much for watching and using us here at namehero.com.